In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your name forever, my king and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Forever, my kingdom, my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. 
Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. There are plenty of people out there who think that the Catholic faith is about a bunch of rules made up by old, grumpy, celibate men. And some of those people probably are even Catholic themselves. And if you look at the, church, the history of Christianity, you'll see that the reason that we have over 30,000 different Christian denominations uh, today is basically because somebody along the line uh, did not like one of the rules, and so they got rid of the rules. They felt that that rule or whatever rule it was imposed on their freedom, and so they did things their own way, and they broke off from the church. And they began what they thought to be the quote-unquote true church. I grew up in a small town in southeastern Nebraska, uh, Milford, Nebraska, and Milford is not a Catholic town to say the least. Uh, it's a town of less than 2,000 people, and it has five or six Mennonite churches, depending on whether or not you count the ones that are outside of town in the country. Some of those churches, Mennonite churches, are literally on the same street. And the reason there's so many is because Going back to their Amish roots, uh, any time that a new technology would come into use, there would be a group in the church that would start to use that technology and break off and start their own church. I still remember my best friend's great-grandmother, when they would come into their house, uh, when, when she would come to their house, they would have to turn their television to face the wall because it offended her. She went to the church where they didn't believe in television. Now, I'm not saying this to make fun of anyone else's faith, because I think a lot of us would agree that the world be, would be a better place if we turned the TV towards the wall every once in a while. Uh, but my point is that the, the number of churches in a single small town is based off of basically the number of rules that they've gotten rid of. And this makes me ask, does getting rid of the rules make us free? This happens in the Catholic Church as well. Fifty years ago, uh, it was the rule that every Friday throughout the entire year, not just during Lent, we had to give up meat. And uh, eventually we just limited it to Lent and the church said, you're still required to do some sort of sacrifice on Friday in honor of our Lord's passion. But how many of us actually do? Wouldn't it have been just easier to give up meat every Friday? Also, uh, about 50 years ago, the fast before Mass, where we abstain from food to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, was three hours. And before that, it was 12 hours, and it included liquids. And uh, we relaxed the rules to one hour. And how many people chew gum right in the middle of church? I see it all the time. I've got pretty good eyes if I got my glasses on. Uh, so what is the result when we relax the rules? It rarely makes us better. Is the division throughout Christianity, which is a result of getting rid of the rules a little at a time, is that true freedom? Now, of course we're celebrating Independence Day today and this weekend, so it's worth spending some time reflecting on the true meaning of freedom. I think people nowadays confuse freedom with doing whatever we feel like doing. But if we always did what we felt like doing, I promise you that you would end up miserable. Think of the rules and think of morals as the banks of a river. The banks of a river give the water of that river direction. And water with direction can be used to generate electricity, to water crops, to power cities. But if we take away those riverbanks, what do you have instead? Well, you have a swamp, and the water is stagnant and lifeless. Look at the world around us. We've removed the riverbanks. We've taken all of the morals and all of the rules that God has given us, and we've gotten rid of them. And where has that left us? It has left us miserable and testy and at each other's throats. It has driven our country nearly to the brink of insanity. 
We have gotten to the point where we deny the most vulnerable human beings the dignity of life. We treat sexuality and gender as if they don't matter. We have artificially limited the size of our families. We've redefined marriage. We've redefined family. We've redefined truth to mean whatever we want it to mean. We've traded faith in God in for faith in men and faith in technology. We're pushing harder and harder to remove every ounce of moral fiber and responsibility from our world. And where has it gotten us? We're literally rioting in the streets. It has gotten us to record numbers of suicide, depression, addiction, violence. It has led to broken homes, children opening fire on their classmates. It has left us broken. This week, the FBI reported a record number of background check requests for gun purchases because we're so scared of the world we live in. What has gotten us here? Getting rid of God's law, getting rid of the rules, have left us hurting quite a bit. It has left our culture stagnant like the waters of a swamp. Without God to guide us, we wander. While we thought we were racing, for ultimate freedom, we've only become more enslaved. But Jesus, he has a different route. He says to us in the gospel, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is here to take us beyond this broken idea of freedom that we have. He's here to show us that there is so much more to life than following whims and desires and feelings. When we question, isn't freedom being free from rules and restrictions? Isn't freedom about living your life your own way? We can answer with Christ, no. It's about living life His way. The fact is, is that we're called to live differently as Christians because he lived differently. In the gospel, Jesus says that all things have been handed over to me by my Father. Now, we don't have the Latin in front of us as we're reading, but the word to hand over in Latin is tradere, which is where we get the word tradition. Tradition is something that is handed down, handed over to the next generation. But the most important time we hear the word handed over in the Gospels actually is when Jesus is on the cross, when he hands over his spirit and dies. In that act, in the act of his death, when he handed over his life, Jesus was exercising the greatest freedom that a person can possibly have. And that is to live and to die for somebody else. Nobody can take that freedom away. In a strange twist of fate, the greatest expression of freedom in all of human history was found on the cross. Why is it that there are so many saints who are also soldiers? Saint Irenaeus, Saint Sebastian, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Martin of Tours, St. Joan of Arc, St. John Vianney, St. John of God, St. Thomas Becket, St. Jerome Emiliani, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Michael the Archangel, St. George. Why are there so many soldier saints? It's because when we lay our lives down for somebody else, people see heroism, and they see courage, and they see Christ. There is nothing more symbolic of freedom than hearing a 21-gun salute at a gravesite because that meant that somebody lived for others. Even though Jesus owed us nothing, he gave us everything. And that is true freedom. To give when you're not asked to. To give when you don't have to. To lay down your life for others. So this weekend, this Independence Day, Hand yourself over to God as Jesus did. Because we know that looking out only for ourselves 
Nothing makes us more of a slave. But when we live for others, as Jesus did, only then are we truly free. Together we stand and profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, not substantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our trust in our Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers before the Lord. For all members of the Church, that we may be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and use all our gifts to share the Gospel with others, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who serve our country, communities, and in the front lines of health care, that their generous service and sacrifices may be honored by all and rewarded by God's favor, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For our nation, that we may be a land of freedom, which respects each human being's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who hunger each day, particularly children, that we may be instruments of God's mercy and kindness by our acts of love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are sick, especially those in our parish prayer chain, that God will lift their burdens, bringing them peace and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our beloved dead, that they may enjoy eternal rest in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, especially for the intentions of this weekend's masses, our nation, the health of Chris, who has pancreatic cancer, and the parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, we bring these prayers before you, asking you to answer them if they be according to your plan for us. We ask them as always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy, Father, Almighty, and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Holy, O Lord, the fast of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and James our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 